Hey, welcome back to Woodruff Woods. Hey, today I'm at my parents' house. I told you I was gonna do something on stone walls. So this is one of the stone walls. Uh, this is actually directly behind my parents' house. You can see how neatly laid this is. And uh, I know from years of, of living here when I was growing up that a lot of these walls have sunk uh, over the years. And as you dig down beneath them, the rocks are below the surface. So a little bit about these stone walls. Um, there's actually a professor, um, and I'm, I'm losing his name right now, but he's uh, from the University of Connecticut. He's done a lot of studies on this. And uh, interestingly, in the Northeast, you find these stone walls everywhere. Um, and in Pennsylvania, especially in the North, you find them in a lot of places. Part of the reason for that was that Connecticut actually owned this part of Pennsylvania. So if you take the top, the northernmost border of Connecticut, and you draw a straight line to Lake Erie, you'll notice that the northern border of Pennsylvania is in direct line with that. They are, uh, you can actually see how Connecticut would have extended to Lake Erie and actually a little beyond into Ohio. So the people that settled here were largely farmers. Um, and so they tended to build these stone walls as they pulled the, the rocks off of the, the fields. And you would think all these millions of tons of rocks that were piled up, you'd think the, the ground would be fertile, but it's notoriously uh, rocky soil here. Part of the reason for that is geological. Uh, the last ice age dumped a lot of rock here. And as the frost comes and goes out of the ground, you tend to get what they call frost heave. So these rocks tend to be pushed up from the below the surface and they are exposed for the first time in probably, I don't know how many years, but thousands, if not millions of years. So, um, so the, you know, the farmers would take these, they'd move them to the side of the field. And that was a way to, you know, kind of get them out of the way and that way they could plant their crops and, and so on. And it is my guess that this wall is one of those where they piled the stone from the fields out here. And uh, a lot of times you'll find that these, if they're a little wider, they would take the small rocks and put them in behind, like between two walls and make a bigger bigger wall, which I can show you an example of that and I will. So anyway, let's, uh, let's take a little walk and I will show you uh, one of those examples, which is very close by here. So here is a good example of where you'll find bigger rocks on each side, but in the middle they would take the smaller stones and pile them in. And, and you can see this wall is, is quite wide here. And um, that was, that's another sign that tells me that this was probably done just to clear the rocks off of the fields. And if I tilt this up, you can see these are hay fields here. As a matter of fact, down in that area is where I cut that hickory the other day. So uh, anyway, I'm going to take another little walk. We'll check out this stone wall over here as well. You can see it running up this way, which all of these fields are bordered with stone walls. So another clue that these were probably done just to move the rocks off of the field. So this stone wall here, as you, as you can see, it's a little bit taller. And this one may have been used to keep cattle or other types of livestock uh, within the the property boundaries and typically if you see them about waist high that's what they are for um, most of these were not built for any decorative purpose they served a real purpose they were very utilitarian to them to the settlers and uh, you know probably here in Pennsylvania these walls probably date back to late 18th maybe uh, first part of the 19th century uh, and, and potentially a little bit later than that, certainly not into the 20th century too much. But one of the things that uh, I had said in the Beyond the Stack interview with Shifty is that it has something to do with firewood. And what that means is, is that these stone walls a lot of times were built because wood had become very valuable. Um, Pennsylvania was largely deforested, as was most of the Northeast. The uh, settlers uh, were sending a lot of that wood back to England, especially the hemlock and the white pine. Uh, they had virgin timber throughout the Penn's woods, 
And uh, so they would send this back uh, to England. Uh, the hemlock uh, was needed uh, mainly for ships. Uh, it's It's got a... Uh, qualities that are rot resistant and it's also very strong so they like them for the mass on uh, on on the ships you know that would hold the uh, uh, you know the sails and so uh, hemlock was in in great demand the white pine obviously very good for building uh, of any type so so a lot of these woods were were basically deforested completely and so the value of lumber um, and and not only that firewood as well uh, became very high you take some of these older homes that were made of stone or or they were large farm homes they could burn up to 30 cords of wood just to heat the home in the winter so it was much more valuable to the settlers to have the uh, firewood than to take those and build, build fence out of them. So even though the settlers originally started building wooden fences, as they deforested, it became much more uh, practical for them to use, use stone in place of that wood so that they would have it for fuel and lumber and so on. So, uh, you know, I had mentioned in a previous video, I find these to be really cool. I think that uh, they are just a, a peek into our past and, and just like the pyramids of uh, Egypt, which obviously are much older, um, these are a peek into the past. And, uh, you know, if you take the time to look at these and, and really kind of study how they were put together, you realize that, you know, first of all, the amount of work that went into it is just incredible. And, uh, you know, you have to figure they didn't use tractors or bulldozers or anything like that. This was all done with horses and mules and, and manpower. So, uh, you know, you start taking a look at some of these rocks and you think, wow, you know, these had to be some healthy, healthy people that put these in place. But, uh, you know, this is another example of one that is very well laid in. Um, you know, who knows how long it's been here and, uh, you know, but it is really kind of, kind of cool. So this, this wall kind of gives you another idea of maybe how this was laid in here. If you notice, we have kind of similar sized stones, you know, these were brought off the field in small bunches. So, you know, in this case, they probably had a bunch of small ones in here, laid them in. And then as they moved through the field, they put the bigger ones and you notice even on top they put the flat rocks to give it a, a level appearance. So even though these were not put in for decorative purposes, it was really, uh, like I said earlier, more utilitarian. They, uh, they did in fact bring these off the field and, and they probably brought them off in bunches and they stacked whatever was was in that bunch and uh, here we have a good example of just a bunch of different sized stones I mean you can see this one's very small where you know most of these are and I mentioned this in my other one uh, these were two hand stones meaning you could lift them with two hands um, you know you didn't see too many of them that are massive if you do see massive ones they tend to be at the bottom of the stone wall and I'll try to find an example of that and show you like I say many of those are down beneath the surf surface I mean, years of leaves uh, laying there and, and decomposing certainly builds the ground up, plus the weight of the wall allows it to settle a bit. But uh, it's probably, uh, you know, more than likely that this wall was used to keep cattle in, uh, is my guess. And, but uh, we really don't know. Um, obviously, this was a farm area, so, uh, so it, it's a good chance that it, that's the way it happened. So here's a good example of a larger stone at the bottom, right there. And if you think about it, uh, those larger stones you probably couldn't pick up by yourself. So they were dragged into place by a mule or a horse, and uh, then they built on top of them. Uh, and the bigger rocks were probably the ones that they wanted to, to most get off the field. So they tended to come first, and then they would build from there on out. I came over here into the uh, forested area of my parents' property, and uh, you can see this is another, this is actually a fine example of a stone wall with some really larger rocks in it. Um, it goes, uh, oh, probably a couple hundred yards down through the, the woods here, 
and uh, meets up with another stone wall. But uh, as I was mentioning, you can see some of the, the bigger rocks down here at the bottom, and then they get smaller as we go to the top. So, uh, you know, just one of those things that I find interesting. I hope you do too. And, uh, you know, if you do like this kind of thing, and know something about it, you know, please comment. Uh, I'd love to chat about it. This is going to wrap it up on stone walls for today. It's a relatively short video, but uh, when I found out that this actually had something to do related to firewood, I thought, wow, what an interesting uh, little piece. When I did the other piece on, uh, on stone walls, I didn't even know uh, that it had anything to do with firewood. I just find them interesting. So uh, anyway, I will, um, I'll try to get this posted and uh, you know, I ask you to subscribe if you can. I thank you all that came over to subscribe and check out what I'm doing over here. Uh, welcome, and uh, I look forward to speaking with you. So, everybody, have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one.